Dawson Rider with you. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Today we are going to be continuing my Power Rangers Team Up Rewind review series, Say That Five Times Fast, leading up to the upcoming triple Dino Team Up in Beast Morphers, and today we are going to be covering the mini crossover between Power Rangers Turbo and In Space. Now this isn't a traditional Team Up, and I almost counted it for a bonus episode, but I wanted to cover it right after Rangers of Two Worlds from last week because there's a surprising amount of similarities in it, both in terms of some of the plot ideas, of like the core plot ideas, not the general plot, and just the approach of these early team-ups back when everything was connected. Because that's what I talked about a lot during my Rangers of Two Worlds review of how back during this era, from MMPR through in space, everything was really connected, you know, and so when characters returned, it didn't feel that different from, you know, a regular reoccurring character returning. So the Alien Rangers returning didn't feel so much like two casts meeting as just a regular character coming back. The same thing here with Justin. Him coming back to team up with the Space Rangers didn't feel as much like a team up because he's he is from a previous cast, but he was once part of this cast. So there's a similarity there. You also, oddly enough, have the send-off of a Blue Ranger. We had Billy getting sent off in Rangers of Two Worlds and Justin here kind of getting his proper end. Very different situations and scenarios both in and outside the show but still kind of funny to note and you also kind of have the element of the two villains having this rivalry but the villain from the previous series which is Divatox is a reoccurring presence in Turbo just like Rita and Zed were a reoccurring presence in Zeo, and I thought that was kind of interesting that there's kind of these similarities as a result of the more all connected approach of this era. But so within this episode, the core premise, Evatox is kidnapping Lightning Cruiser and Storm Blaster, but Storm Blaster escapes, you know, if you remember the sentient cars from Turbo, he escapes and goes to find help. Divatox calls up Astronema and they have a little bit bickering. Like I said, Divatox is a reoccurring presence in the In Space series. She appears a handful of times. And I like that we had this scene within this episode since it was sort of a team up, as I always like to see the villains from the two different seasons interact in some way. I kind of wish that was played up more. I don't know whether this episode would have warranted a two-parter, but I think it would have been more interesting if these two were fighting for control of the two cars the whole time. But basically she calls Astronema and is like, yo, I lost this car, can you keep a lookout for it? And Astronema's like, yeah, sure, I'll keep a lookout for it for myself. But then you have Justin too, kind of at home, looking up at the stars, wondering where his friends are, are they okay? Wondering why they chose Nate to be the Gold Ranger, just all that type of stuff he's wondering. And his dad still like looks like a stock photo and has to work and Justin's upset about it. Something I'm cu curious about here though is I was surprised, I'm always surprised when I revisit this series how late in the series this episode is. Not for a team up episode, but for Justin finding out where his friends are. Like that's kind of awkward. I appreciate that this episode actually did give us a little bit closure on Justin, whether or not you liked his character. But it seems really off to me that he did didn't know his friends were okay and had gotten new powers. Like, it seems weird that his friends wouldn't call him or something to let him know, like, yo, we met this alien dude or alien human dude. I don't know where we stand on Andros. He's got, he gave us new powers, we're fighting, we're, we're good. You know, it seems like out of character that the Rangers wouldn't have contacted Justin to let them know that he was okay. That always bothered me. And at the very least, if the Rangers never bothered to contact Justin afterwards, wouldn't he have seen one of the times when the Space Rangers fought on Earth, either physically like himself or a news report of it? It just seemed weird that after so long into the series, like we were like 18 episodes in, that they never contacted him or he never found out, and he felt like he was in the same position in terms of knowledge as he would have been in episode 3 of In Space. So I wanted to talk about that. But anyway, Storm Blaster arrives on Earth, the Space Rangers pick up the signal and they're like, oh my god, we gotta help them. But then in the process of helping them, they get ambushed by Astronema and like a Leoman looking monster and they get kidnapped. And which is why Storm Blaster goes to get Justin to help and to rescue the Rangers. He does a little bit PJ spying, you know how it is, and a little bit of a civilian fight. And he's like, she's gotta be quiet. And then he's like, Ayasa, Ayasa. Like, they heard that for sure. They need to go in and rescue the Rangers and like ram through the doorway. And Mountain Blaster has a morpher for him. All their powers were like destroyed, I guess, at the end of Turbo, and that's why they had to go to space. But I guess Lightning Cruiser and Storm Blaster can just reprint morphers if they want. I think that was like the headcanon most people had for why TJ got his powers back in Forever Red. It was just always funny to me in this era how losing powers was like a really big deal and like they'd have to quest for it and go through some sort of big ordeal. And then like later it's just really easy to print powers. It's just kind of funny. So he gets his powers back. 
he goes in to rescue the rangers. They all fight alongside each other, which was enjoyable. I liked seeing Justin interact with TJ like when they were fighting because TJ's blue now and he's like, who are you? I was blue. I liked that little moment because they remind you earlier in the episode about their friendship and it was kind of neat to see that. And they just kind of had nice little moments like that and it was kind of cool to see him interacting with his former team in battle. And then the only Sentai footage that's in this episode happens right after this is there's a little bit of a Megazord fight, which is like awkward because they're like, check this out, Justin. We're gonna call one individual Zord for like four seconds and get punched and then make the Megazord. But that's the only Sentai footage. There's nothing team up -y related about it. It's not like the O-Ranger versus Conquer Ranger footage. It's just there to fill time. And then the end of the episode is them going up to space to rescue Lightning Cruiser, who is still kidnapped. There's a cool scene, which I always liked, of him flying in Mountain Blaster and the Rangers on the Galaxy Gliders. I thought that was kind of a cool crossover -y moment. And then they all rescue the cars and they kind of give Justin a send off and say, you know, once a ranger, always a ranger. And then Justin's dad feels guilty about fishing and he decides not to be a stock photo deadbeat for like one weekend. But this episode honestly is overall enjoyable. Like I said, it's not a traditional team up, but it's an episode I always liked. I'm, I've never loved or hated Justin. I've always been kind of middle of the road. And even though I think it's awkward, he never knew like that his friends were okay earlier for whatever reason. I like that they wanted to give closure for him. It felt like a right bookend for it. It was kind of a nice mini team up and honestly even though neither this nor the Alien Ranger one felt like a regular team up, this one in a way felt more like a team up just because I think it had more little elements about like the previous Turbo character interacting with his Turbo team, stuff like the Galaxy Gliders and Mountain Blaster being together, uh, the two villains clashing, but it wasn't like the best team up stuff, but I felt there was more of those little moments that crossed over the series mythologies in a way, if that makes any sense. I kind of wish, like I said, that they had expanded upon the Divatox astronomer rivalry for this. Like, I would have easily cut out the Megazord fight and maybe put in a little bit more stuff about them vying for control of the cars, because that could have been a cool element, kind of like how Rita and Zed and the Machine Empire were kind of fighting against each other during the crossover in Rangers of Two Worlds. So I think that was a missed opportunity. Again, maybe not a two-part episode, but they could have expanded on some things here just a little bit. But overall, I think I think this is an enjoyable episode here. I'll give it a 6.5. 6.5 is kind of like an overall mashup of my ranking of the episode and like as a team up because this is meant to be like team up review specifically I'd probably rank it like a 7 or a 7.5 because it's a solid in space episode I thought but like as a team up it's not as traditional but I think it had more team up hallmarks than you would have thought. I don't know what Hallmark Movie Channel has to do with this. So next week we are finally starting the more traditional team ups with In Space and Lost Galaxy when it was actually two different casts meeting each other and it wasn't as all connected so it'll be interesting to get to that. In case there is anyone wondering about the Turtles crossover, that is going to be covered as a bonus episode after I finish all the proper ones. But what do you guys think? Do you enjoy this episode as a crossover or as an actual episode? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, before like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.